Hey guys, it's Ellie DiGiulio. It's time for Coffee and Questions, where you ask and I answer. This month uh, we've got some really interesting questions, and we actually had a whole lot from Team Patron. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. Thank you so much for asking, and I'm excited to start answering. The new office is great. Uh, as you can hear, probably there's a lot of traffic on the main street out there, but it's not too bad. That doesn't really bother me unless I'm recording a video. Um, I can hear the boardroom of the commercial building in front of us. They're like an IT accounting company something. I can hear everything they say. If I ever wanted to commit corporate espionage, I would so be in. Um, but otherwise, it's fantastic. Um, it's so nice to have an office with a door. I've never... Well, not that I've never had one, but it's been a long time, like six years. So it's nice to be able to like come in my own little space and just be separate from the rest of the house. I'm so used to being out in the open, and it's nice to be able to kind of cocoon up and just focus really intently. Unfortunately, I haven't made a lot of book progress since the last time we talked. I've, um, I'm about 14 chapters into the red pen edits of Mirror of Ashes. I'm getting ready to turn it over to beta readers, but I've been really sick, as you might be able to hear in my voice, and my day job, and all that stuff. So having the creative space to cocoon up in has been really, really helpful even through that. It's just been slow going. I'm really looking forward to the summer when I can open the windows in here and all this natural light, and it'll be gorgeous and wonderful, and I will write all the things, although an ocelot would be helpful. Lately, I have been writing a lot, doing all these revisions. I've been listening to Disparition, which if you're familiar with Welcome to Night Vale, you know their music is amazing. It's this ambient, kind of really interesting, odd, I don't, I don't really know how to describe it. Um, I'll just, maybe I'll just put a link in the, in the comments and stuff below so you can hear it. Because you can download all his stuff on Bandcamp and just listen to it for free if you want. I've thrown money his way and I have several of those albums now. But just something about having that ambient, kind of spooky, but still a little playful is really setting the tone for Mirror of Ashes. Normally I write, I, I can't write when I'm listening to music with words because I just start to write what I hear. And it really affects what I'm doing. It makes it really hard to concentrate. So I often listen to other ambient music. Um, Dispersion is now high on the list. But like Pretty Lights, Expo Explosions in the Sky, uh, Zenith Amputee Traveling Band, um, and movie soundtracks, like and, and game soundtracks. So like Final Fantasy piano music. Um, the 300 soundtrack is awesome. Underworld soundtracks, which is super cliche and I don't care. Um, but yeah, anything like that. It just depends on what I'm writing and when I'm writing it. Um, if I need a boost in the afternoon because I get tired, I, I'm better in the morning. I'll listen to more up-tempo stuff. But depending on what I'm working on at the time will kind of determine the mood for what I need to listen to, but always without words. Right now I'm looking at a couple of different things. I actually haven't made my schedule slash plan slash goal list for the year. And I know it's really late. Um, I just, I've been having a really hard time getting grounded, which is a weird thing to say, I guess. Um, just settling into this new apartment, and there's been a lot of things going on kind of in the background of my personal life that I'm, this next year is going to be really amazing for me, but it's not going to change a lot in my writing career. It's all internal and you know, things just shifting around, like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be 31 on Monday, and I think 31 is, 30 was a, a, a wreck everything year, and 31, I think, is a building year, and so we'll see what's gonna happen. As far as projects that I want to do, I am getting more serious about um, exploring in the, the short stories that I do. I'd like to get up to two a month, so if you haven't joined Team Patreon, please do, we're $18 a month short. Of reaching that goal. Um, I do want to write a serial. I do want to do more first person. I feel like I'm more effective in first person. And I want to do a photography project with my friend uh, Linda Michelle who does amazing uh, photography of Hamilton where I live. And uh, Ink Changer, if you didn't know this, is based very strongly on Hamilton even though it's set in the States. It's an imaginary town. 
but it's based on Hamilton. So she and I want to work together to do a photo project um, of like four or five different locations in Hamilton in the real world. And so we want to do that. Um, I don't know if there's going to be another EP like that. Honestly, to be very honest, it didn't sell well. Um, Sharon and I were both super excited about it and we love it to pieces, but it didn't sell well. So we'll see what happens. Um, it looks like I am going to be doing another Kickstarter this year, maybe two, um, because I went broke paying Des for the Sword of Souls cover, and it wasn't very exciting. And we had such amazing, like, I just so, and still, like, two years later, so flattered and honored by the way that the Core Riley crowdfunding went, and it gives me such an opportunity to do more cool stuff for you guys. So we'll probably be doing another Kickstarter maybe in March or April to get Mirror of Ashes a cover and, and neat stuff for that. Um, and we're up to, we're, we're going to start making swag. Uh, we cleared that milestone in Patreon. So I'm looking at buttons and bookmarks and t-shirts and mugs and stuff like that. Uh, my, my brilliant Photoshop hero design guru husband is going to be helping me uh, work that out. And we'll probably sell it through a Zazzle store, um, although there will probably be limited run t-shirts that it will be part of the Kickstarter that we'll order special with the American Apparel, like really swanky. Anyway, anyway, um, I do want to. I have this secret project, not secret anymore, I guess, where I have this. I woke up in the middle of the night almost two years ago, and had this amazing idea about a Sherlock Holmes fic, um, not fanfic, but like a different, like what if this? And I don't want to tell you any more about it <laughs> because it'll ruin it. But that would be a novella that I'd like to get writing. Um, I feel like as soon as I start to get my feet back and like really get into the routine of having this day job and things being different, then I'll be able to start cranking it out again. So there's a lot of stuff that I want to do. I just gotta, I just gotta get my head screwed on right, you know. But yeah, big projects down the down the pipe. I totally just spilled coffee on myself. Sorry. I, this shirt is clean. Oh my god. <sighs> okay. Anyway, so the multimedia thing, we actually, my husband and I met as part of a gaming group. I think I've mentioned this before, but maybe not. Um, so we were LARPers, and he was running a lot of stories where he would, like, hundreds of people from all over the world would come to these proxies. And, and we, he would be in charge of their characters, but he was responsible for telling people what happened to their characters when they sent them away. And what he would do instead of writing these individual boring emails where it's like, you took this much damage and you did this thing, and it were like a paragraph of black and white text, he would make these PDFs that had music embedded in them and images and things like that, and they were so amazing. Everybody ranted and raved about them. Before, you know, I even knew who he was, I received one of these. And it was incredible, the work that went into it. And it so made a difference as a player to read this. And, and there was gravitas and there was emotion and, like, it mattered. And I really loved that. And I've always wanted to do something like that. And so after 2014, I got really burned out on the forgot doing all Forgotten Relics um, short stories. Which isn't to say that I'm I am a little tired of the story, but I'm 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 finding my second wind. Um, I just wanted to start doing more, just kind of one shot stories, and so the picture that I chose was these two dancing skeletons, and I was listening to the Sleepy Hollow soundtrack, and I was like, oh, that'd be great if I could put music in it, and then I found a piece from Disparition that really fit it well, and um, I just. I just really feel like having multimedia um, pulls together all of our senses and it makes such a bigger emotional impact. So you can actually do more with the story with less words and less description because there's a visual and there's sound and there's things that are like working on you subconsciously that pulls it all together. And uh, the reception of that was, you know, the reception was good. Like. I had a couple people tell me they thought it was really cool, um, but just like anything, you know, when you send out a newsletter or an email or whatever, like, you, your response rates are really low, like, the, it's considered high to have a 3% response rate to anything you do, which makes me want to vomit just a little bit, um, but so, yeah, so my, 
I, people seem to like it. I probably won't do it that way all the time because it will hurt the anthology to not be able to embed sound. Um, we may do a special edition PDF that that works that way if we can figure out how to do it. Right now, the the tech we're seriously limited by the technology of of, of readers. Um, I know that a couple of companies do books, uh, Noble Beast, so Eliane Soderstrom in particular, who's done Slice of Life and uh, worked on the Steampunk Holmes ebook. Like, these are things that, this, this is what I wanted, where it's like you can, there's an audio book that's embedded in it so you can read along while somebody's reading it to you, and there's music, and there's like, you can click on people's names, and this little trading card thing comes up, and you can look at maps, and like, in my, in my mind, that's the future. And that's what I want to do. And that was kind of where I was going with this multimedia thing, was how do, how do I do this in a small way? And I really love it. And there may be more of those in the future, but it won't be every single one of them because it won't be able, it won't translate to Kindle or an EPUB format. So I'm really digging it. Um, other people seem to be digging it too. And we'll just see how, um, how it goes in the future. Wow. Um... The best thing in January, I don't even know. It feels like it's, like, I'm shocked that it's February. Like, where did, where did all that time go? Um, honestly, the best things that happened to me in January were not book related. Like, I've been doing edits this whole time, which is just, uh, so ego destroying. Which is good, I guess, in the long term. But, um... I think the best thing that happened was my my dad was really very generous with his gifts this year at Christmas and um, I was able to go to Ikea with some friends who are also very generous with their time and transportation now that we don't have a car and, and, and buy things for our house that we have always wanted and always needed. We have such a like grown I've grown this heart for having people over for entertaining for hosting and hospitality and we just didn't have the means to do that and you know when it right before we moved a, a friend came out of the came out of the blue and said do you want our solid wood eight person table and I was like yes how much and she said zero dollars and I was just so blown away by that and then so now we have the mean, like we have the seating and the space in this new apartment. And so we went to Ikea and bought, you know, cutting boards and a whole new set of dishes and cutlery. And now we can have people over, which may not seem like a big deal to you guys, but this apartment is twice, easily twice the size of the one we had. And we love hosting people. And so it was a big deal for us. Um, also very, very awesome was a different friend texted me out of the blue again and said, do you want our bed frame? And I was like, oh, you know, we already just bought one and it's nice. You know, it's uh, this wrought iron curly cute thing that I just, Lino and I just both loved. And she showed me a picture and it's like a solid wood four poster canopy bed. And I was just floored because it's literally the bed that I have always wanted. It's a, it's a princess bed, kind of, but it's still kind of manly. And I was like, how much do you want for it? And she's like, zero dollars. <laughs> and I was just, you know, she showed me the pictures, and it's, it's a very expensive bed. But they were, you know, the people who had it were going to throw it out. And we rented a U-Haul and went and got it, so it cost me a hundred bucks, you know. And I just, making my house a home is going to be one of the things that happens this year and I've never done it before I don't really it's hard for me to confront that I don't really know what that means not that my family life was bad or anything or you know my mother couldn't make a home or anything it's just we moved so much that it was never permanent and so this feeling of groundedness again is very important to me and I feel like this year so talking about what I'm looking forward to in February it's like I'm going to turn 31 on Monday and um I'm really looking forward in February to starting to put my feet down on the ground and to start walking with purpose, if that makes sense, where I, I know where I'm going and I know what supports me and I know that I'm safe and that I'm held and that I'm heard and seen and that I'm rooted in a community now. 
and I, I can start to build a home. And that just, I just never thought that was going to happen to me, honestly. Um, so as much as I'm looking forward to, to celebrating a, another trip around the sun, and, you know, Valentine's Day we don't really do, so um, I'm just really looking forward to February being the month where things start to get real in a good way. Um, I'm also really looking forward to starting to plan for our Kickstarter and just really having more time to connect with, with you guys. Um, you know, people are joining Team Patron at a, at a trickle right now, but I think it's going to start growing. And it just makes me so excited because it means I get to make more cool stuff and I get to talk to you guys more and it's all an experiment, it's all an adventure and, you know, I think, I feel like February is going to be the month where things start to really move. And, you know, I'm just really excited about that. So, yeah, that's it. Five questions, which is actually really good. They were great questions, you guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys asking and, and tuning in and and all your love and support. Thank you so much for making this possible. And I really, if you haven't joined Team Patron, I encourage you to do so. It's a it's a buck a month. Um, you can't you can't beat that. And uh, I just I love you guys so much. And I'm I will see you here in March and hopefully have some really exciting news for you. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later. Bye.